But this title, if you want to title it for anything, it's called All in the Family or All Out. You're either all in the family or all out. This year, we've got to have family. It's time to build and not tear down. Say, it's time to build, not tear down. Now, if you don't have a partner with you, think about in your mind and close your mind and close your eyes and think about any type of person that you've torn down lately. And then look at that person in your consciousness and say, it's time to build, not tear down. Go ahead. It's time to build, not tear down. Now look at the person next to you and look them right in the face and say, it's time to build you, not tear down. We've done, we're professionals at tearing down, but we've never known how to build. We, 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 all, we know all the accusational words. We're pros at that because we've been, we've been bred into it, as you say, into this world. And so a lot of times accusation or strife and things like that are so easy to do because we were born in it. But loving someone when they don't deserve it is a little strange to us. It's weird. It's weird to smile at someone that doesn't like you. And when you actually mean it, even your own, your own flesh will vomit up something. If you start letting love control you. And we've got to let love control our life this year. Amen. It's a choice. It's not something you've got to wait on and wait for him to baptize you and wait for a feeling to come. You've just got to allow your consciousness to say, I'll allow love to control me today. And you have to actually do it every day. Yeah. It's not like you'd come and get a, a good, you know, a, a good meeting, and we all get, you know, riled up, and we get a good feeling, and we leave out of here, and we're feeling wonderful, but the next day we're hellions. That next morning we have to wake up and say, Lord, let love compel me today. Yes. And he'll give you every chance. And he will stick you in the worst places that you think. He will not put you in places that you like, that your flesh likes. But he'll put you in places that your new man likes. And your new man will be screaming and you know that he's got you in that place because you asked for it. Come on, you, you, people on the web streams, file with me. Am I right? Even some of us right now, you're going, I just can't believe you got me in this place. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> when we start even asking, I want to walk in your love. Oh, Lord, set a fire down deep in my soul. I can't control. And he goes, okay. <laughs> and he starts dealing with your control. Things start happening out of your control, and you can't control it. And now from then you're wanting to go, shut the fire down, you in my show. <laughs> and you want to get mad at him because he answers you immediately. I love that whole deal about, you know, uh, no man can see God. If you see God, you die. That is so true because when you do see God, in other words, when you give your heart to the Lord, your spirit is seeing God, you immediately start dying. Your whole life is a death. And every day you have to learn to die, not live. <laughs> it's, true. It's, true. it's true. It's the craziest thing, this gospel. It's so backwards. I mean, whoever thought, you know, this Christianity would be about picking up your cross daily. <laughs> Think about that. If we really had a cross to pick up every day and you drag it all through life, put it in the car, you know, Put it in the back of your truck, pick it up, and drag it into the real estate office. You know, I mean, how crazy does that look? <laughs> Y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy. But we've got to lose ourselves so that we can find God. 
You've got to purposely lose yourself this year to find God to possess you. This is the time. This is the season of the spirit of Elijah. We're in it. And he's sending a refiner's fire upon every heart. Not just a, the, it's not just some type of revival that's going to just hit in little spots. It's, he's hitting our hearts with this fire. And he's refining us. Now, it, sometimes it doesn't seem too good, but I guarantee you, if you're being refined right now, you're closer to the Lord than any of us. Because he's sending your spirit so close to you, and he's so near you. That's the moment when you're being purified. That's the moment you start praising him. As soon as the fire starts hitting your life, that's the time to praise him. You know, you were, we were sitting here, I hadn't even got to my notes yet. I was sitting here just listening to the music and the worship. And I thought, there is nothing that can keep us from worshiping. They could kill us. They could drown, try to drown us. They could beat us. But we could still worship. And I thought about Paul and Silas being beaten with rods. And as they're bleeding in stocks and in the darkness, they feel their blood dripping off their backs upon the ground, and it reminds them of the sun. And they start praising him. And as they start to praise him with pure worship, God shakes the foundations to where you don't need a key to get out. You just need God. And I'm telling you, I have been, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I have been at a place to where I, I knew it was my fault and I, I was reaping what I sowed. And I was on the floor screaming my head off, losing my mind, and I would hear the Holy Spirit say, praise him. But yet I had so much guilt, but something would come out of me, even though it was my fault and I was ruining my life, I felt like everything was falling apart. I would make myself start to worship him. And I realized his love was still there. Because nothing can separate you from God's love. It doesn't matter if you're being purified. It doesn't matter if you're being accused. It doesn't matter if you've made mistakes. It doesn't matter where you are in life. If you praise him, he will meet you. You die, your old self dies off and your mind enters into that dimension of the realization that God is standing right there with you. We've got to have him. We've got to have love back. And we've got to do everything we can in our power on our side to get it. And all we have to do is start letting it come and agreeing with it. If you agree with it, it will control you. Because he's sinning, the Elijah spirit is here. And he's refining us. And I'm going I'm to read it because this is part of the, the message in Malachi 4, 5 through 6. It's, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great day, great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn, you might want to underline that, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Isn't that strange? He would strike the earth with a curse because there's no family. I'm going to be totally real with you. Because I, I, I've, this, this has been on my heart for a long time with Jesus. I love that guy. Amen. But I saw the Lord one time. I don't want to see it again. But I saw the Lord one time when he was on the cross. It was excruciating. He, everything was out of joint. And I would get these flashes of seeing him. It just didn't even look like a man. 
And then all of a sudden, I'd see thousands of people that made him up that were completely sep separated from one another. Trillions within his own body, totally separated and out of joint. I could hear him arguing. I could hear arguments over doctrines, divisions, because they're not believing of this and they're not believing in that, and, and the enemy just laughing. And, and there's this to total pain in the body of Christ and separation. And as I saw the, the body being disjointed and separated and the pain that was going on within his own body, and I could hear at the time the body of Christ screaming as well, I could feel the spirit of death hovering. And I realized, did you know that if your body gets out of joint, especially all of your body, you're so susceptible to any disease or any type of sickness that's in the air. Because if you have trauma that goes on in your body, your, your immune system shuts down and then it, it immediately starts trying to back it up. But if there's tremendous trauma that continues, your immune system actually just starts shutting down completely. And what was happening with Jesus was he not only just took on sin for our sake so that we could be free, but if there was something scientific as well, everything was out of joint. His body was going through trauma, and he was a completely open body for the enemy to come in and totally wreak havoc to him. And every disease and every spirit that was up on the earth just attached itself to him because he was completely out of joint. You see, what I'm trying to say is that we have, we, as, a, as a body, we've, we've gone toward, you know, going into the prophetic, walking in the spirit, and having all these wonderful times, but we got to get the joints back together as well. Because the, there's a lot of people right now that are sick and lame and have a lot of diseases, not because, you know, the enemies uh, were under attack. It's because we haven't put the body back together. It's disjointed and it's completely open and susceptible for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc. Because if the body is not, if it's not put back together and built back together, we're going to still have the same problem. We'll have wonderful revivals every now and then, but if we're still out of joint, we're still going to have the same problem. This makes sense. But the wonderful news about that is God, Jesus was raised from the dead. And in other words, the father let it get so far out of joint, it looked t totally like there was no way he could ever be put back together, and suddenly he gets put back together. The Spirit of God raises Christ Jesus from the dead. He raises the body of Christ, puts it back together, and raises him from the dead. That same spirit that quickened him is going to quicken the body of Christ again so that we could be put back together and the whole body be joined together and knitted together in love. And then there's this huge powerhouse and move of God that's going to actually start, start to transform upon this earth. And there's going to be healings everywhere. Not because, you know, there's going to be one evangelist. It's going to be the body of Christ being put back together. Everybody's going to be a powerhouse. Because you're going to be in your right place. You're going to be in your right place. And everybody's looking for their place. Right? I, I asked the Lord, you know, I, it's strange. I asked the Lord, oh, put me in the place that you want me. That's where I have grace. And man, he puts me in the places that I think there's no grace. He puts me in relationship with some of the strangest people. No effect, no, no ponder, no, you know. Right? But most of the time, if you're connected with people that you really, it's kind of hard to connect, you're probably in the right place. You're probably in the right place. Because they need what you got, and you, they, you, they've got something that you need. But it just doesn't come the way we want it to come. But we're still screaming, and we're wanting, still come, Lord Jesus. We've got to have this family. We've got to have the body of Christ back together. I love healing, and I love power, and I love moving in it. 
But my God, I, I want, I, I'm going to labor until the body of Christ comes together. I want, I want Christ to be formed in the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm not happy if I'm not joined to the right people. I'm not really all that. Something is out of place if I'm not in my place or connected with the people that God wants me to be in. In relationship. And that's what we're all feeling at times. God, I love you. I love what you've given me. But, and there's something you just can't put your finger on. But I don't know what to pray. I just want more power. I want my, and he just says, I'm going to give it to you. Here comes Joe around the corner. And you're like, ooh, ooh, look. It comes in a different form. It comes in some in a human form that you, we really don't like the taste of. Right? If we would have been living back in the day of Jesus and he show up, we would have done the same thing. I can't believe that carpenter says he's from God. He came in a whole different form. They were expecting a controlling king just to take over. But here comes a king that serves them, loves sinners, hangs out with them, speaks a weird gospel too, in parables. Isn't that strange? But my gosh, he carried this love that you would die for. And it drew his family to him. Call them out. John. Follow me. Peter, come on. But I don't like John. I don't care. Let's go. A whole ragtag bunch that really didn't really sometimes get along. But they knew they were supposed to be together. Because they were all centered around the Lord. There's some things we're going to have to drop this year. In order to get in relationship. And mostly it's our pride. It really is. It's mostly our pride. You, listen, on the other side of pride, there's love. Major love that's waiting on you. If we'll just drop it this year. We've got to drop it and let love take control. This is the year of family. This is the time to build. Amen? Amen. We're, we're actually living stones, Peter says, doesn't it? But some of us in this room are burnt stones. Black, burnt, thrown away to the side. Tried to be used and tried to put in, the, in a place that, by man instead of God. And you didn't fit, but they tried to force you there and it just really hurt you. Squeezed you in the wrong places. It's like trying to put a square peg in a, in a round circle. Put some wounds on you and you feel like you're thrown away. But guess what? God picks those. He picks the burnt stones. He doesn't just, with, even with building Solomon's temple, they didn't have to chip away and try to make everything burn. They would actually take a stone that actually would fit another stone of the way it was made. How'd you like to actually chisel rock? Do you think you could do it perfect? Would there be a perfect line? Or would it be jagged edges? Uh, there'd be jagged edges. Look at all, look around you. Do you see some jagged edges? But yet we're supposed to be living stones built together, building God's house. And we're not supposed to look great. We just need to start finding ourselves where we fit with one another. And some of us that have jagged edges need to be with others that have smooth edges. Some that have great smooth edges need to be those with those that have jagged edges. And you'll fit perfectly. And before you know it, we'll start building back the body of Christ. But yet with us, sometimes the enemy gets us into this perfectionist mode to where everybody has to be a square peg. 
Man, are y'all clapping out there, streamers? I can barely breathe. <laughs> 